Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are getting started with the last chapter of this series that is chapter 6 and uh, as a part of chapter 6 we are going to understand more about test tools and automation. We have two topics to cover as a part of this chapter that is 6.1 defining the test automation project. How do you define an automation project? and the criteria and 6.2 specific test tools which can be helpful at any point of time to assist your testing so in this tutorial we're getting started with the first one 6.1 and uh, covering the first segment of it 6.1.1 that is defining the test automation project so as a part of this tutorial we are going to generally initialize with the basic understanding of what exactly uh, test tools are and the responsibility of a test manager is in order to acquire a tool and also understand the necessity of having a tool sometime you may do it better cost effectively without a tool and that's really not required to have a tool for the organization but at some point of time the manual efforts may be very expensive or may not be efficient at all so you need to have certain tool support in order to accomplish those tasks and that is what we are trying to get from the foundation learnings and then we come to the advanced understanding to further follow that as a part of the introduction here we are actually trying to begin with determining again like to define a cost effective tool the pocs and interaction and understanding of the process is very 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 important if you did really don't understand the architecture of the application which you're going to test or probably automate uh, using a tool then getting a right set of tool and efficient tool is highly complex so the technical test analyst must consider a part of it to determine what kind of tool will be really helpful in order to meet the expectations but not only that there are a lot of detailed uh, responsibilities of the technical test analyst is available as a part of this particular section for example determining who will be responsible of the test execution so you determine that who will be executing this particular test but obviously with the uh, coordination of the test manager because mainly a uh, test manager makes such decisions selecting the appropriate tool for the organization timeline and skills of the team what they already have and probably what you need to upgrade further or ramp up defining the interface requirements between the automation tool and other tools as test management so we know about the interoperability feature now and generally a lot of tools have the integration possible between the management tool and the automation tool so that a lot of statistics from the automation execution can be imported to the test management tool without any further efforts development of uh, the adapters which may be required to create an interface between the test execution tool and the software under test sometime you need set of protocols to identify an application with to assist the help of the test tool and thus uh, those adapters would be very helpful helpful at that point of time to determine what exactly we need to have with us in order to make this tool work more efficiently Selecting the automation approach, like if you're using any kind of frameworks as a part of your automation skill set, then you determine that at very early stage. Scheduling the automation project and allocating the time for maintenance, because obviously a script has to be maintained from time to time, thus uh, everything has to be very well considered as a part of your planning. Training the test analyst and business analyst to use and supply data for the automation obviously just like your manual testing the automation test also requires feeding the data does uh, you have to coordinate being a technical test analyst with the test analyst or business analyst to acquire the data training the uh, determining how and uh, when the automated test will be executed of course the process you know at what point you will begin preparing the test and what point it will be executed whether making sure that the application is available or not and a lot of other factors like that and also determining how the automated test results will be combined with the manual test results like to have a matrix which would probably have the combined combination of both the results and give you an output which is summarized further to discuss we are talking about selecting the automation approach we have different approaches available as a part of uh, automating a test for example automating through GUI automating a data driven approach or applying a keyword keyword driven approach handling software failures considering the system state so 
in simple terms, we do have certain golden rules <clears throat> which will be used as a part of automating a particular test. And we need to highly comply with those principles so that our automation is not uh, turning into a failure or rather more cost expensive. And we, if we consider everything at right point of time and uh, implement the best way, probably we can save a lot of money and time instead of like working on and struggling on a lot of challenges. So these are the five things what we will be covering as a part of this segment. So starting with automating through GUI. So obviously we know that generally the functional testing tools allow you to uh, interact with an application with certain uh, protocols and identify the objects and do that. But the same thing, instead of directly interacting with an application user interface can be done with at API level. Like API level can also do the same thing using a command line interface, which is CLI or any other interfaces, which you can make use of. So a technical test analyst at this point of time should determine that what is the best interface for this particular product at this point of time to interact. Because not only the option is interacting like a GUI based testing, you may also save a lot of time by having API or maybe quicker and better responses. But at some point of time, you know that you want to evaluate or validate the user interface as well. And that's where you need to decide what is best suited at what point of time. So determining the most effective interface is really important. And uh, another difficulty is sometimes when you talk about the GUI testing, not every time the object remains the same as the product upgrades or moves with the new set of integrations and it transforms, the properties may further be modified. And that requires a lot of maintainability to your test scripts. So we have to consider those parameters into mind. <clears throat> the next one is talking about the test uh, driven approach, which is test uh, uh, data driven testing or data driven framework, where generally a simple definition to data driven testing is that when you want to run a single set of instruction with multiple set of data, is what you make use of as data-driven testing. Now, the only difference between a normal script and the data-driven framework is a normal script is having a hard-coded values and can only run for that given set of data. But what if I want to run this particular set of activity with multiple set of data? And that's where data-driven testing is required. So the add-on thing to understand here at this point of time for the consideration of technical test analyst is to realize that to enable data-driven testing in my automation frameworks, I need to have an adapter. Adapter or kind of like a function which will initiate my data-driven, which is to basically interact with a source of data, interact with the script in order to run that multiple times. So a driver script is basically prepared in order to enable that uh, data-driven testing. And additionally, here, generally you don't put uh, data source internally within the tool. Your data source may be external, maybe in a spreadsheet or database or XML or probably in cloud. So any of the source, it could be TXT format as well, notepads. So just that, you know, what kind of format you are storing. So making sure the test analyst has managed all those information right from the beginning. As a part of the progress, we generally say that the test analysts are the one which manages the functional set of data. So even if it comes to technical set of data, the information must be coordinated with the test analyst in order to uh, acquire them and utilize them at the right point. So some cases when the tests are very complicated and having a higher end of frameworks, the tech test analyst will be the only responsible person to execute the test scripts. So, you know, not every time a tester executes or automation tester executes your test, sometime your test analyst can also run your test depending on the complexity of a script. So that's about uh, applying data-driven approach. Similarly, for keyword-driven approach, we do have certain criteria, but before that, what's the definition of a keyword-driven testing? Here, the test cases are uniquely provided with a keyword or action word where keyword is just like a calling function or calling name. So I determine a particular keyword to each and every test case. Now that makes it unique to be identified if I want to run a particular test from a pool of test. So what if I have around 10,000 test cases, but I want to run only 500 test cases randomly from this pool? 
but not just system generated random values i want to define which 500 test cases will be executed and that's where these keywords will play a very vital role in order to decide and call only those necessary 500 tests so that's where keyword testing uh, is very helpful when talking about regression testing or talking about maintenance testing and generally when the system evolves not all the test cases may be required to redone once the keywords and data is defined, the test automator will be the responsible person to execute that. Thus, it's really important for the test automator to be aware of that uh, what exactly is the keywords we have defined. And probably in the industries, the test analyst and technical test analyst are the one who determine the keywords because that has to be a uh, meeting from the expectations of organization standards. And once defined by one person, everyone else can follow that. The keywords and actions along with data to be used may be stored in, again, external sheets, just like spreadsheets or a database or probably another tool which can manage your data resource. And uh, obviously, to talk about such high-end uh, test scripts, which includes a lot of such frameworks and uh, testing approaches, a programming skill is a very important aspect for the tester as well because writing the script is maybe okay, but debugging your script requires a good skill. So that's very important to be taken care of. Additionally, we do have some of the add-ons which should be added to the script uh, when you're preparing for automation, which is just not about writing what you want the tool to do for you, but also to prepare for any unforeseen situation. And that's where we talk about handling software failures, like exception handling. So you can always include a block as a part of your script to handle the exceptions which are thrown by the application or probably the tool itself sometime that this activity could not be performed. And what happens in that case? You may have a lot of other activities to continue beyond that. So you always include an exception handling which handles your uh, runtime errors and excuses that or overcomes that or probably bypass that to continue with the next iterations. So a very simple, simple real-time example is when you want to run a test with multiple set of data and probably you are trying to run 100 iterations of that, then maybe the second iteration, the data is wrong or maybe not accepted by the application. And you run this test and get involved with some other activity. And uh, at iteration two, obviously you have a runtime data issue or runtime issues from the application and the test gets paused there. And when you come back after an hour, you see that it is still waiting at iteration two. So that's a waste of a lot of your precious time. And uh, we would like to include exception handling here or recovery scenario here, which will help you to uh, overcome this and move to the iteration three. So yes, you should include handling software failures. Um, and yes, yes, there are conditions which you can see on the slide for that. You can consider that or beyond that as well. The last important thing is considering system state. When talking about creating the test automation scripts, it is uh, we do have a lot of golden rules. The golden rules says that uh, when you start recording a script, the moment or the state where you start recording, you should actually stop your recording or the end of the script must be the same as the initial state of the script. Why is that so? Because when you want to iterate, the, uh, the script will again start from the beginning. And when you say starting from the beginning, the application will be supposed to be at the same state where it started. So we always, uh, when we prepare an automation script, which needs to be iterated for multiple times, then the initial state and the end state of the application must be same. For example, if you have already launched the application or you have a written script to launch the application, then make sure that at the end you close the application. That means every time you end with an iteration, it closes the application and again it starts from the top where it launches the application as a new instance. So that's what we need to take care of as a part of considering the system state because if it leaves at certain point, then the second iteration will launch another instance of that and it will have conflict that there are two identical windows with the same name and I cannot do what exactly you asked me to do. So there might be a lot of confusions, conflicts from the application in order to do the same thing. So that's all from the very first topic of uh, defining the test tool automation projects and some of the consideration which you should 
uh, taken to account in order to automate your test. We'll be further exploring more uh, in the second part of this tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Till then, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to answer your queries and address them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.